the cameras that essentially I run on all my shooting videos, you know, that have scopes, um, he does those. Um, he's out of South Africa. So we're going to go over some of the history behind trigger cam, where they evolved from, where they're going, um, and, you know, what all I use them for. And I'm going to make you do most of the talking. <laughs> Good. That was a lucky chat. Yeah. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for visiting. Uh, first things first, if you are new to the channel, appreciate you coming. If you've been here before, thanks for coming back. The uh, best way to support me is to support yourself. Make sure you go ahead and go down in the link below and check out the link for Global Ordnance, my ammo sponsor. Get yourself some ammo, and better yet, then take that to training. Uh, go to WeaponSnatcher.com. You got handgun classes, carbine, and long gun. Uh, from Texas to Washington to uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, and probably West Virginia soon. So make sure you go down and check those out, and thank you very much. He's down. He's down. Go ahead and move. Why don't you say a little more about yourself than I know? Thanks, uh, John. Thanks for, for having me in the studio. It's nice to be here. Mm. Um, we've been traveling the States extensively for the last month. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's finally nice to meet up with you off the, mm -hmm. off the shot. Yeah. Um, a bit about myself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a bean counter. I'm an accountant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. That, uh, <laughs> that took, uh, took a liking to hunting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met up with my current business partner, Ifar Bezaidenout. That's a pretty Afrikaans name. Yeah, yeah, I, I can't um, pronounce that. Yeah, and we, we got together and started throwing a couple of ideas around, um, which most of them came from his side. Um, and yeah, it, it's, it's spanned uh, since 2011, since 2011. Okay, I didn't. I guess I didn't realize that you guys were that old because I started hearing about your cam in 2019, 2020. Yeah. Kind of yeah. Yeah. So we started in we started in 2011 by by building a hunting simulation rifle. Oh, like a full rifle. Like a full rifle, specifically okay. for for the training of young shooters, and also um, for PHS professional hunters. Okay. So. The basic principle was that we built the camera within the rifle scope. So as you pull the trigger, it took a picture of exactly you know where you where you put the crosses. Okay, so that's the name, trigger cam. Well, that wasn't the name then. No, that's was that where it comes from. That's yeah. that's that's where it probably originated yeah. from. Yeah. Like, like, like I mentioned earlier, I get questions about that. Why are you called trigger cam if it goes on the scope? I'm yeah. Like, I don't know, man. Like. 
Yeah, so, I mean, we, we put a couple of prototypes in the market, mm -hmm. and the feedback that we got was, you know, the rifle was heavy. Mm -hmm. um, was, so you said, wait, for my clarification, the, you said a simulation rifle. Is this a rifle you take to the bush, or it'd be like an indoor simulation thing? It can or? be indoor. You can take it to the, you can take it outdoors. Can take it to the you know shooting range. Is it firing live ammo? It was not firing live ammo. Oh, okay, so okay. it was basically solidly built for for training. Okay. So you know to to familiarize a new uh, shooter with with a rifle, mm -hmm. with the operation of a rifle. But in 2011, there weren't the technologies that there are today. We we, had, yeah. we didn't have access to that. So we had to build all the chip boards into okay. the rifles yeah. um, butt so it was it got heavy and complicated so <clears throat> when i was in the marine corps as a marksman instructor we used a uh, a fat system and it's a simulation system but what it basically does is it has an overhead projector projecting onto a large screen mm. and you have rifles or whatever um, service weapons that you're using that are hooked up to dongles mm. and they're simulated they're simulation rifles so they're built to as much the same, but they got electronic components in there. And you're shooting basically downrange on this projected screen, and that logs all your um, your data, everything that you're doing. And you can do a wide array of uh, trajectory and scenarios and stuff like that. And now there's a system called a Virtra system that's indoor, and it's like almost, I think it's 270 degrees. Mm -hmm. Haley Strategic has one, and you can do, I mean, you can do any kind of scenario. I did one down there in uh, Scottsdale, Arizona. But you can do something all the way to like zombies and everything and playing around. Um, but as for a standalone system to, that you can take in and out with you everywhere, I haven't heard of that before. Yeah, so, so taking the feedback back and analyzing it, uh, we basically came up with the idea to build a camera that you can move from rifle scope to rifle scope. And that's where... Wow. That's where trigger cam, uh, the original version came out in yeah. 2019. So we, we went back to the drawing board uh, from 2015 up to 2018 and uh, decided to launch it in South Africa mm -hmm. in the early part of 2019. Um, you know, just to make sure that if something went wrong, it was close by and we can, we can, <laughs> can, fix, it, yeah. we can fix it. And we, can, we understand the market much better than the international market. Yeah, I mean, that's true. You got to, uh, like, test it. But also, you guys are pretty tight on your QC. I mean, we've had a couple conversations where you, know, you track the numbers of everything, yeah. the serial numbers and all that to see what batches are coming yeah. from. And does that track all the way down to the person who assembled? Correct. Oh. So there's so a... To blame. There's a... <laughs> yeah, so, you know, we've got a we've got an in-house system. So everybody that works at the factory um, gets a batch number. So, so you you you'll see you when you when you read the code there'll be a AW001. Uh -huh. So that'll that'll be Andre Wagner 001. Ah, okay. So there'll be like 200 units of that. Then we'll have a FR101 up to a certain number. So we we personalize the manufacturing. Okay. It also gives a bit of pride to everybody that's working there. Yeah. It puts and, the skin uh, in the game. And put skin in the game, and the guys, the guys really take pride in it, you know. So um, somewhere in the world, somebody's got a trigger cam with their initials on it, mm, they, and, and yeah. they and they built it. Yeah, I mean, I know how cool that can be. You guys recently made a couple trigger cams with my logo on it. I mean, this one, yeah. I, just, I stuck my sticker on there, but yeah, we personalized <laughs> it a bit. Yeah, that's pretty cool. The uh, I also I, I I don't think I don't remember if I sent you photos or anything, but have you seen this? It's a company that I'm working on with this 100 Concepts. Mm. I sent them, I measured out what it would they would need, and wow. he sent me out too. His first one's made, and both so far, both fit perfectly, and they're working great. First time yeah. I've seen it. Looks yeah. pretty cool. Pulling that, because a lot of times for competition, I just leave it on my gun when I'm traveling, and so I don't take it off, but I'm always concerned about the lenses, the yeah. glass, so um, I wanted something to cover it up, and right off the bat, nice. I nailed it. But, and yeah, he branded it for me. So that's always nice. <clears throat> um, but yeah, anyways, the, uh, 
the trigger cam. So you guys, from when you guys hook these up to the apps, and if you guys don't know, you can hook these up to the trigger cam app and you can go in and change the settings um, how your trigger cam is recording. And that's the primary way to do it. And like I record a majority of my videos in 2.7K at 60 frames per second. So for editing, I have double the amount of frames I can check things out. Mm. Um, that's not needed for everybody. The average person is probably just 4K, best quality, and just to check it out that way. Um, but when you, so you launched these onto the market in South Africa, what kind of problems or solutions did you come across or did you have or anything? So um, <laughs> on the first version, the, um, uh, to hook it onto the rifle scope, the, the screwing system was, was at the bottom and not on the oh, side where okay. it is now. So you had, you see it's on the side here yeah, now. So yeah. at th those ones were at the bottom. So you'll have, we had a problem where the bolt uh, would have, would have hit, the, <coughs> uh, hit the trigger cam. So you, you won't be able to, you will, you'll, you'll fire one shot, but you won't be able to reload. <laughs> so um, we took that back to the drawing board. Um, and came up with the idea to put it on the side. Mm -hmm. um, we also realized that the, um, the, the buttons and the sound was not as um, conducive to and user friendly as we wanted it to be. The sound is in the microphone in it? Uh, no, the, the sound of the button. So when you press oh, the oh, button, oh, gotcha. it, was, it was very faint and the, the lights weren't as good. Yeah, okay. Um, and it was also sitting at the back, not on the side, right here. Okay. Uh, the original version. So in the beginning of 2020, before the disaster of, of COVID hit the everybody, dark the dark yeah. year, <laughs> uh, we, we were quite far developed with, with the second version, uh, the one you have in your hands now, the 2.1. Okay. Um, and the reason for that being was we knew um, that when we when we would have launched, you know, we would have put a target on our back oh, okay. um, somewhere along the line. So we were we were thinking ahead about, you know, getting a, a second product out rather sooner than later. So mm -hmm. in COVID, um, when nobody could move out of their homes, everybody was online shopping, <laughs> yeah. and our first production run sold out. So we had to make a strategic decision to say, listen, uh, are we going to do a next run on it? Or are we going to put a, a pre-order waiting list down? Which was, is where I got my first one. Which you did. Which uh, you needed to wait for six to seven months. Yep. Um, and then get, get the new 2.1 version at the original one's price. Yeah, I remember that came out and I, because uh, I was, when they hit the market, I started seeing them, and I went to uh, Kalen from uh, Modern Day Sniper. Yeah, I went to his class, and he was running one. I was like, okay, that's really nice. So the next, when that dropped, and I immediately put my name in the hat and put money down for it. Yeah. So, I was, and I think I got it in less than six months. Yeah, we were. It, I think you were the first, one of the first. So yeah. that's why. So <laughs> yeah, we we actually had um, a major backlog on on pre-orders. Yeah. So. It took us nearly 12 months to fulfill that pre-order list oh, wow. since the the first batch was delivered okay. on two points ones. So from there from there onwards, we just we just continued upping production. We just continued um, improving. We did we did a lot of uh, software imp improvements. Um, obviously, with all the um, Android and, and ISO mm -hmm. phone software updates, you know it also influences the app. So there's a continuous yeah. update with that. Um, we all you, in the app world, you always lack a bit be, <laughs> behind because yeah. you don't know you don't know what 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 ISO or Android's going to do. Have you had any issues with? Um, I mean, I don't know who ha hosts your app or anything, but with essentially Silicon Valley and having a firearms-driven app and everything, have you had any issues with that? When we were, when we launched the original one, um, we struggled on uh, on ISO. Yeah, we struggled to get it listed, but we eventually did. We eventually did. So, you know, it's a training tool. Yep. That's all it is. And basically what the, what the app does is it allows you to focus the trigger cam with your optic. Yeah. Um, you don't need to, to basically use the app any way out, anywhere else. Um, yeah, just get it to set up. And then yeah, but we, 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 for you guys in the training 
sector it's an advantage because you can hardwire it mm -hmm. up to a monitor. Yep. So, you know, there's now 20 people can see what you see. Yeah. And, and, and there's a direct uh, relation to what you tell them to do, to them understanding and seeing the reaction. Yeah, yeah. I was sitting in front of my computer, I don't know, maybe a month after I got the, got mine, and uh, I was sitting there, I was like, there's got to be some way I can get my shooters to see this, because what the problem I kept having with the app is whenever I would connect wirelessly the trigger cam to the app and someone walked between the two, mm. the signal would completely yeah. distort. And then um, when I have a full class of shooters, like all sending around a phone trying to see fine detail, that was really frustrating. So I was sitting in front of my computer one day and I had just started getting into cameras. And uh, so I called my videographer. I was like, hey, I have this kind of connection and I need this kind of connection. Like, what can I hook this up to that's bigger? And he mentioned a uh, Feel World camera monitor. It's like mm. 150 bucks. So, but they also hook up to TVs too. Um, so, I mean, I had I tried it onto my TV, but I, external power and all that kind of stuff could do that. Yeah. Um, so I bought a monitor and that's what I started using for the first little while to have shooters look at. But then uh, I came across, uh, Phil saw me doing that. I told him what to get for the cables and everything. And then a while later, I saw him with an even bigger monitor <coughs> and size matters. Don't let him <laughs> fool you. So I found that yeah. monitor off the logo and i went and i bought it so now that's what we both use yeah it, it's it's <laughs> it's things like that and feed feedback like that which we like um john so um we did a we did a software upgrade um with regards to the wi-fi mm -hmm. so um it's not perfect um but we've got extension up to yeah. five meters now okay um but you know there's there's always movement yeah um you pick up a rifle on a stage uh, you're teaching a stage, you've got two minutes to shoot four positions, mm -hmm. you're moving. Yeah. So um, that that has an influence, but we're continuously working on it. Yeah. We, we're we striving to to make it better. Well, yeah, like the cable I have, uh, I mean, you can get 10 to 15 foot cable. Mm. So that's what I primarily use. Um, well, it's like this has a internal microphone. And actually it does. the benefit for that, when I hook it up to my app and I'm, focusing and getting everything done um i'll turn my phone volume all the way down so i don't hear it or else Correct. i just get feedback right but the microphone does service for me when i load it in editing because then i can take whatever clip from the trigger cam to my main camera and synchronize off of audio yeah. so that's the benefit for me but also as a backup mic it does well enough well, more than well enough really to be able to um use it if need be i think i did one video of a you know marathon targets? They're like robotic targets yes, that can run yes. on their own. Um, I did a video of them, and uh, we recorded from the A camera in slow-mo. So 125 frames per second, zero audio. I didn't know that was happening. Uh, so when I get into edit, and I was like, I got like three minutes of slow motion here. So I had I used the audio off of this for the whole thing, and it worked just fine. It worked well. Um, I mean, so, and they, they seem to take a beating. Um, I mean, I can't say i haven't dropped mine <laughs> clumsily but uh yeah we made them to last yeah so um you know you can build it out of plastic if you want to but it's just not gonna last mm -hmm. so we went we went for for the aluminium aircraft grade mm -hmm. um so yeah and you what's the largest caliber you guys have had these on because i mean you're in africa so you got a lot of hunting rifles big boar yeah so um the guys shoot it out of a 338 lapua yeah. Um, on on the hunting rifles, usually on the three seven five, there'll be a rifle scope on, mm -hmm. but the recoil is 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 too is you know it's too much on those rifles. You usually shoot short distances on yeah. uh, on big game. Yeah. So not conducive for for the trigger cam footage un, unless you shoot a bit of a, a distance. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, our policy is if it breaks. And it's our fault we replace it, no questions asked. Yeah, yeah. Well, and then you also have a, a series of things that you can do remotely, like a hard reset um, on them if need be, stuff like that, uh, which I think is helpful. The, um, there was one thing I wanted to ask you. Is there any way, I was curious about this, the focus ring, enclosed versus being able to get to it easily on the outside. Was that a, a thing you guys had looked at? So... Um, 
enclosed with a cap on just to make sure it stays in place. Oh, so if it doesn't you, get rolled, yeah. So it doesn't get rolled. Or, you know, with continuous shooting uh, with a vibration, it might just move that half a millimeter, yeah. which you don't want it to move. Okay. So there's a, um, there's a foam insert on the inside of the, of the screw. So it just, ah, it sits. That's why it's so smooth. It just sits tightly on it so it won't move. That's the reason for it. Oh, that's smart. Okay. Yeah, because I mean, little minute adjustments. Yeah. Well, and that helps when you're trying to focus. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, like when I shoot competition, what I'll do is uh, when I get to a stage, I'll hook it up real quick and I'll focus it on like the median target of that stage. And that also has to do with where my magnification is. On yeah. Um, so essentially I adjust because I'm doing competitions on video all the time. I'll adjust my stage planning based off of what I can make sure to get in, in camera. So there are some stages and I would get a lot of heat from this from comp guys is why are you dialing for some shots when you should just be holding yeah. it's faster. I'm like, I agree. But also if I hold, you don't get anything on the video mm. for whatever level of magnification it is or something. Um, so I've tried to make sure to dial enough out to, so I'm at least in field of view for it. Yeah. I mean, um, You'd love to have automatic focus. Yeah, that'd be great. I mean, it'll be great. But <laughs> the thing is, you know, every optic is a bit different. Yeah. So, um, yeah, at this stage, uh, it's manual, but it's not a deal breaker. Yeah, no, not at all. I mean, heck, I'm still using it. Yeah. And I see shooters bringing them out, new guys and everything. And uh, I think the hardest thing for a lot of them is, especially in competition, is just getting used to making sure to turn it on and hit yes. record before the stage. Yeah, I, I always say to everybody, it's, it's like when you buy a new car, there's a lot of new buttons. Yeah. So, you know, the more you drive it, the more you use it, the easier it becomes. Yeah. One thing I did on my first one, it was just not on this one, but when I was learning it, because I couldn't remember what yeah. button did what, is I took a silver Sharpie and I looked at your manual and I wrote on there what did what okay. until I got it down. And at, yeah. it was funny because over time, the more and more I got it down, the marker just wore off. Oof. So by the time I knew it, it was gone. <laughs> can we bite the net <laughs> yeah right right um but i mean i thought about uh sending one over to a laser engraver and having it done but i don't know if that would damage anything on the inside but uh i i know the training side is is interesting with them because i mean it's like you said it's a training tool that's where you guys started off building that yeah. individual package um but they found use in more than just training. Like I think on my side, I have it listed. Like if you want to record your son's first hunt or um, your daughter's hunt, right? You can keep that. And now you have that memory, and you're not just seeing um, what they are doing, but you're seeing what they're seeing. And exactly. As a training aid, it's been one of the best things I've been able to introduce into it. And every time I ask, I always ask my students, like, "Hey, is this helpful?" Specifically, give me pros and cons on it. every single one. I'm like, it's different when you say it to now we have to look for it versus you're saying it and then showing it and it's clearly seen. Because cool. I can specifically do things to mess up in the right way to, to explain mm. what I'm doing, um, and then they just they see it live. Yeah, um, back home we take several young hunters with their, with their parents on their first hunt. Yeah. So um, FR does that really well. Yeah. It works really well with the kids. Um, and it, it just makes a difference. I mean, yeah. uh, you take them out to the shooting range, there will be, there'll be kids that never fired a rifle in their life. Mm -hmm. So uh, taking them just through the stages of rifle safety, how it works, um, uh, letting them see how the rifle sounds, Mm -hmm. um, and what the recoil does, and then, you know, uh, showing them. Uh, we usually got an iPad next to the oh, next yeah. to the trigger cam, so you can see. Okay, you know that's where you got to aim, and uh, just relax. And uh, it's really, um, you know, they they're comfortable. They're really comfortable. And yeah. it also for for you as a trainer, it also makes life a bit easier. Yeah, um, it does. the parents are comfortable. You know, so. Yeah, it's one of the things I like doing. So since I have, I run one on my guns for demoing. Then I have another one that I'll put on students' guns if they're having a particular issue. I had one student. Um, I've only had two students come and to any of my classes shooting nozzler ammo, and each time it was terrible ammo. 
But this first one, he was shooting five, five, six, seventy seven grain nozzler. Um, I can't remember exactly what round, but his groups were like six inches out of hundred yards. Terrible. Um, so I was like, okay, like maybe it's him, right? I've heard good things about Nozzer. So I threw my trigger cam on his gun. I'm watching him. His side picture and all that is great. It turned out the problem was actually ammo, but then it was also, um, he was shooting a really heavy mil spec trigger. And the guy had, he was in the military, he had plenty of time on guns, but nothing where, where he needed to be as precise as I was demanding out of him. So we did two things to fix his issue. One, he had a, uh, three and a half pound flat stage or flat trigger, a single stage just hanging around. So we threw that in for day two because the thing I told them was the priority for this class is you're learning, right? And if you're having a mechanical issue with the firearm that's hindering you, then let's fix that. After the class, put it back in there and use it to gain control mm. of the trigger and learn that and learn that control. You're going to be better. But for this class, let's do that. And then also we, we changed his ammo. But the way I was able to figure out what was what was two things. I got on his gun and the groups were still big, not as big, but they were still big. And then using the trigger cam so that I can verify his sight picture when he was pressing the trigger. So that gave me the confirmation because sometimes it's students don't know what they're seeing. So they mm. don't know that what to tell you. Right. Um, so or what I, you're looking for. Yeah, so that becomes my job. And the adage of, you know, I can't see what you're seeing when it comes to scopes is no longer a thing, which is excellent. And, uh, yeah, and I was able to solve that problem with that. And then other problems like students not understanding their reticle, so they're way off, but they're claiming that they do, stuff like that. It's like, okay, guy, look, now I can literally see. So we took out that, that middleman. Of, uh, I, I'm ego. That, I'm that thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I took out the middleman of ego so I can actually see what's going on and uh, verify. And uh, yeah, it's been, I mean, I use it all the time. It's like it's, I leave it on. Yeah. 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 Um, and especially in competition because going back and making comp videos, it's also a method of me reviewing what I'm doing right or wrong or whatever. And it's been, uh, it's been invaluable. Like I started noticing tendencies that I only would have otherwise noticed if I had someone watching me at every stage, mm. which we don't have, right? Yeah, we've, we've had that feedback, um, you know, um, PRS shooters, NRL shooters, mm -hmm. um, using that specifically to go back and say, you know, on that stage, what did I did, do wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, why did I drop points there and there and there? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's constant improvement for yourself. It's a review, practice, go implement what you've learned. And uh, yeah, we be glad that we can provide something that can assist with regards to that. The, so what I do tell um, some people is it gives you the perception of a, of a narrower field of view. Mm. Have, you no, have, have you noticed that? It's not, it, doesn't, no. it doesn't narrow it, really. But to me, what it, it makes it feel like, the entire um, picture that I'm looking at through my optics is just slightly smaller. Slightly smaller. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, we're bending light. Well, I was going to ask you, can you, do, can you explain? Yeah, that? We, we're bending light. So with your natural eye, you can very rarely see it unless uh, you've got good... Uh, <laughs> how can I put it? <laughs> and unless you shoot so much the, yeah. as you guys do. Yeah. Um, uh, Kaylin has, has given us the same yeah. same feedback with regards to that. But if you take our position um, and you put you put their camera next to our camera mm -hmm. and looking just through through your uh, natural um, eyesight, you know there's a vast difference yeah. between the three. Um, the only other one I'm aware of is a phone scope. I think that mounts a phone. Yeah, there's like another one. There's another one. Uh, uh, American company called Tacticam. Oh, which, I have heard of that. Yeah, you know, which um, which is basically direct competition for us. Yeah. So, the light you lose there much more than than yeah. what what we do. Well, what I mean, we this lose, is working off a prism, right? Works off a prism. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The mirror sitting right up here, reflecting down. Yeah, because I mean, I've taken this. I've mm. looked in there like, <laughs> you're trying to look down a shirt. Just. <laughs> yeah, that's wild. The, uh, did you have other versions that were shaped differently than this? The original one was tube shaped. The, the first prototype. Really? Yeah, okay. well, the first prototype was tube shaped. 
um, but it just we, we couldn't make it work. Right. We couldn't make it work. It's 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 lying in the it's lying in our offices in the factory <laughs> as paperweight prototype <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. How big? So you said factory. How big is what you're running out of? Oh, uh, it's not a big factory. Um, but factory sounds big. Yeah, it sounds yeah. big. It's, it's not big. We've got we've just got, like my studio here. We've got twelve, twelve um, employees working there uh -huh. on a permanent basis. So. Yeah, I mean it's it's basically QC mm -hmm. assembly. It's a small unit. How um, many? How many? If you don't mind saying, how many can you produce a month? We can produce two thousand units a month. Holy crap! Yeah. For twelve people. For twelve people. I can't yeah. do that math, but that's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. And it's not a rush. I mean, we can we can press. You know, we we can wow. do more, but so that's just that's, a good that, casual pace. That's just keeping with the same standard and quality. Um, QC process is not, um, you know, undermined. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it works well. Dang. Well, I think they're awesome. And if you guys don't know, they're live on the site. Um, but you guys have, uh, what was the number, 36 in the United States? 36? Uh, no, you got more than that. 242. I can't remember so, the number, man. Yeah, so we've got, um, we've got 258 dealers That's the number. worldwide. Um, in 65 countries mm -hmm. and the majority of our sales run through the US currently um, 36% we do guns um, more you love guns more <laughs> and you love shooting more yeah um, and um, yeah I mean in, in, in South Africa we our clients use it for something totally different it's bragging rights Oh really? So you know, on a hunt or on a this or on a first hunt, you know, it's it's a different application. Um, whereby I think in the in the states uh, there's much more emphasis on training. Mm -hmm. There's much more emphasis to when you have a rifle to shoot it more often, and to become better at it. Whereby uh, in South Africa we 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 tend to just do hunting, and that's yeah. basically due to our legislation on rifles. Yeah, well, I mean you. You guys think some of our gun laws are nuts? Um, <laughs> the, uh, I mean, just one example. If I remember correctly, when I was there, uh, I was told each rifle has seven serialized parts. Like, um, each, like, modern rifle. Yes. Yeah. And so, like, if I, you shoot a barrel out that's serialized, you got to go then get another barrel that's serialized, get permitted to do it, and then put it on. And that takes six to seven months to yeah. get to get yeah. that. and. A shooter can't wait six yeah. to seven. No, and then and also um, one of the other ones I thought was wild is say this is the only rifle I have there. It's in five five six. My permit says that I can only buy five five six. You you can only own that rifle. Yeah. You call, if you want to buy another one for another gun. A new permit for a new rifle. How do you live, man? I will say though, you guys. Uh, I was actually having this discussion um, the other day. Is your guys' governance, as far as um, your government, law enforcement, and all that, is far less than us. So your capability of freedom of consequence being mainly on your guys' self, mm. you have a larger sense of freedom than you do here in the States because you always have someone that you need to, that's looking at you like, oh, you did something wrong, right? Whether that be by uh, more police force or um, more cameras everywhere, stuff like that. Yeah, so the hunting associations which which each hunter can belong to mm -hmm. um, really assists with regards to that. So really? yeah, so you have to um, you have to indicate that you're competent with a rifle. Mm -hmm. You have to indicate that you use it often. So it's, you you don't just buy it to to stock it somewhere and use it use it on a on a self defense basis how and when mm -hmm. you feel like it. So um, they really assist. I mean, there's there's I don't know how many associations there are, yeah. but um, all of them do a, do a good job. All of them fight for the rights of gun owners. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, in South Africa, you can either be a dedicated hunter or a dedicated hunter and sport shooter or just a sport shooter. Mm -hmm. So there's different uh, applications for you to own rifles. Um, so, yeah, they, they play a vital part. I mean... They help out. Yeah. They, they help out. If there's any... Uh, issue from uh, you know from government's point of view where they want to pass a law which is not conducive the guys 
you know, all stand together and, oh, so and take uh, it on. It's like what the NRA it is supposed is, to be. <laughs> it's like what the NRA, I, I don't know, I don't know what supposed to be means, but it's, it's what well, they... Uh, it's what the, uh, the NRA has been caught multiple times doing uh, very, very negative things with their, with the money that they get, because they're mm. all donation all and everything. And so now, like, the NRA used to be one of the... Bi- well, it used to be, it might still be, the biggest um, gun association in the U.S. And it set the standard for a lot of years. Mm. Um, but then light started to be shed on them. And people were like, what the F are you actually doing? We don't like you. So now it's other associations and coalitions that have stepped up and uh, trying to do the goodness for us. Um, so like if uh, laws are trying to be passed, they'll mm. be the ones that are combat it. And everything, yeah. Which, in my opinion, the... Uh, it's not the coalitions or the foundations or the associations. It's still the average voter. I mean, there's more of them, more of us, I should say, than anything. So when something comes goes down locally, that's where people need to act. But yeah, you know, um, just to quickly come back in terms of our rifle licenses, there was a uh, there was a period where there was uh, amnesty applications. So oh, amnesty. Yeah. So uh, somebody wouldn't inherit the. Uh, inherit the rifle from his father or grandfather and then just never put it on his name. It was, it was okay. in the safe the whole time. So that contributed to a lot of, of, of piled up applications. So that's why there was a long period of time where it took six to eight months to get a rifle license. Mm-hmm. And it was just because of everybody went in, gave their, gave their rifles back, filled in a new application. So you... <laughs> You had a hell of a lot of applications lying on a, on sounds like the ATF <laughs> on a on a guy's desk. So, but now I mean I, I spoke to a to a gun uh, a gun shop owner, which is a friend of mine, and you know it's, it's three months now, four yeah. months now. So that's quicker. It's yeah. it was a period where it was difficult, but it's it's an acceptable time now. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's. Oh, I think it's really interesting and uh, finding finding out what other countries are other countries are like with firearms. I know when I travel to other countries, I get questions. I mean, people automatically assume I'm traveling there with firearms, uh, but like my trip to South Africa, I didn't. Right, um, the next one I'm planning to, but I get asked. I'm like, I can't tell you anything more than a Google search, like unless I'm there and I'm asking questions, like now, right? Yeah. Um, Look, I mean, South Africa and Southern Africa, that part being renowned for trophy hunting yeah. you know there's a lot of international uh, hunters yeah. going through Johannesburg International or Cape Town International so the the process is pretty streamlined if the paperwork's in order there's there's no issues yeah I don't think there's I no remember issues. getting told if I'm gonna take a, a rifle there for hunting I gotta start planning it two months out start doing the paperwork two yeah months out. Uh, but like um Merrick from Boker Safaris, he's got a guy, they do a service, they handle all that. 100%. Yeah, which I think is awesome. Yeah. Well, it just makes life easier. Yeah. Yeah. And you got to pay a little bit of money, but I mean, if you don't got to worry about it, like, yeah. but you guys can buy suppressors off the shelf. Yes, we can. <laughs> yeah. That is. And put it on straight away. <laughs> yeah. Without any dumb issues. I mean, I don't know. How tight do I have it? Yeah. I only keep this on here because a 10.5 with this break, mm. even with the suppressor on, it's still really loud. Yeah, <laughs> I was uh, I was surprised. Yeah, oh, you shot one? Yeah, yeah, um, but I like them. Um, well, is there anything new or anything specifically that you want to tell people about with your trigger cam or a company? Or well, we we constantly developing. Mm-hmm. Um, We've got a we've got a, another product on the market which we call the BSP mm-hmm. bow shotgun pistol. So it's a, it's a small uh, block camera that's got a fixed focus, which mm-hmm. is either Picatinny rail mounted or barrel mounted for a oh, shotgun I think I've underneath. Seen, yeah, it goes underneath. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we developed that for for specifically for shotgun training. Okay. Um, you know, so you can you can follow. Are you leading enough? Are you, are you lagging behind? What are you doing? Um, and then uh, on the AR side, the same. Oh, really? You know, okay. there's a, there's a, there's a, a lot of AR shooters um, in South Africa. I, something I actually hadn't thought of in re- relation to you guys. Have you guys thought about uh, 
I mean, I don't know, night vision or thermal stuff in the future? We have, but the, the market is, is saturated. Yeah. But with recording capability, right? You know, again. <laughs> I'm giving bad ideas for people. Again, <laughs> again then you, you're going back to our original idea where everything is in the scope. So, you know, then right. you're competing price price range again. Yeah. Um, so we want we want the the user to say, listen, I can I can if I buy a clip on thermal for the front of my rifle scope, mm -hmm. I can use my trigger cam to record, like a lot of our clients do. Yeah. And if I want and if I want to take it off, I can put it on a different rifle. I I did it on a uh, my Sons of Liberty thirteen seven, and mm -hmm. it's got a a one to ten vortex razor. So I had this on there, the vortex razor, and then I had a clip, clip on, on thermal. It looked ridiculous, yeah. but it was so cool. Yeah, it um, worked. Yeah, it yeah. worked. And the uh, the thermal actually had a, uh, a reticle built into it. But when I turn my illumination on on my optic, I can see the center of the reticle perfectly from my um, scope, and it didn't shift to zero. Um, and it, it was it worked perfectly. I mean, I was shooting steel out to 400 with yeah, it. Yeah, there's the answer. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I, I don't think... Oh, I remember what I did. I have a bad habit sometimes. I don't put the SD card in. That's what happened that night. Um, so I thought I was recording. Um, there <laughs> happened another time. I was at Pig River. It was when uh, Kaylin and Phil were down for one of their classes recently, and I was um, assisting with them. And the sun was perfectly behind me, and I'm shooting 5.56 five, at like 350 yards, and it was hitting – the sunlight was hitting the back of the bullet flawlessly the whole way. So it looked like I was shooting – uh, laser beams and you can see the round not just trace like a bright shining light mm. the whole way and I was geeking out I was like ah so I thought I was recording and you went I didn't have the SD in so the next next several days like I made sure I had the SD and I'm watching the light and I'm waiting and it, it didn't repeat itself as well that slow mo function would have worked perfectly on that <laughs> on those images yeah it would have been really cool because it would have been uh, something I could have used in demos in classes mm. But, you know, and that's another thing that this helps with is something I'm working on is uh, editing specific videos to show in classes, specific concepts, um, which I think is really important to be able to do. But, uh, I think you guys brought a great product and uh, I mean, I use them all the time and I don't, use, honestly, man, I don't use stuff unless I really like it. But you can, if you look at a majority of my rifles, you'll see the same stocks, same grips, same similar triggers and everything and they're going to be set up generally speaking, very similar, because, uh, I mean, I like what I like, and yeah. between guns, it, they all feel generally the same to me, but, um, no, I'm glad to hear that, thank you, yeah, I appreciate it, um, well, I appreciate you coming to visit, I mean, especially, you know, letting me, when I was coming out to South Africa, linking up, and, uh, hanging out with the family and everything, um, let me eat all your food, yeah, there's not a lot, not enough biscuits in South Africa for oh, you, John, man. That's okay. We smuggled some back. I got some more. Good. Good. I got to save some for Matt, though. But anyways. But yeah. Um, again, thank you for coming on. Thanks. The um, Make sure you go down in the descriptions below. I'll make sure to have links to the trigger cams on the website. Same with the uh, B5 stocks and training. I appreciate you guys for coming back. And make sure you check out for the next videos coming up next week. If you're still here, one thing I want to make sure to tell you guys. So at the end of the majority of my videos, if you don't stick around for them, I usually throw something out there in regards to uh, mental health. There's um, there's certain traits that people, we all carry, regardless of what they are. They're stronger in some people versus others. And in my opinion, a lot of those things can be figured out through introspection with yourself. Uh, for example, some shadow areas of my character that I work on all the time, I see as more dominant in others. But because I understand them within myself, it allows me to be more compassionate with others. So if you're coming up against problems or hard times or difficulties with someone, make sure to understand that compassion should be leading your way. And But you cannot let that go so far as to disturb your peace or ruin your lifestyle either. So... Uh, you got anything on that? Have you experienced anything like that? No, but I appreciate you sharing that. No. All right. So, again, check out the stuff down below, and I will see you guys next week. And make sure to get out and bang.